Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. My voice sounds a little off, I'm fighting the flu right now, so just be patient with me. Uh, before we get this video started, I wanna remind everybody that you can become a member to my channel now for just 99 cents. The MVP, VIP, and Pro is gonna disappear at the first of the year and all those perks are gonna transfer to the eBuzz Central member, which is just 99 cents to get all those perks and an excellent way to support the channel and the content that you like. Also, I would like to send a thank you out. We're at 16,700 subscribers. That is great. I thank you guys for watching my channel. I'm glad I can put information out there that you all like. So thank you so much. In all the distributions I cover, I go from lightweight to heavier distros, from KDE to LXQT to XFCE. Today, I'm going to kind of put a, a, a list together of five different distros we need to watch in 2023 because I believe they're the lightest and easiest to get around on older hardware or if it's just something you want to put on a newer machine and let it fly. So that's what we're going to do today. We're taking a look at five different distros. So without any further ado, let's get to the videos. In doing my reviews, I try to include all the distros I can possibly find. And out of all of those, the one that was most surprising to me the last time I looked at it was Seduction OS. It is based on Unstable Debian. That's where you come up with the word SID. And then Seduction. They put those two words together and you get Seduction OS. It is a rolling release. It is what you probably would call the continuation of the AptoSid community from back in the day. It's been around since 2011, so it's about an 11 year old distribution. And it's also got a great forum, great news. Uh, downloads, you can get it in, I think, three different flavors. You can get it in KDE Plasma, LXQT, or XFCE. But I'm killing two birds with one stone today because I want to look at the LXQT desktop environment because I really do like it and I think it's very impressive. And it's really lightweight and you still get something that's, uh, you know, quick, snappy and has a little bit of beauty to it. What we're going to do real quick is I'm going to close out of this and we're going to go over to the Seduction desktop. Now, if you download Seduction, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine and boot into it, this is the screen you're going to be met with. Right off the bat, it's got a nice, beautiful wallpaper. You've got a single panel down here on the bottom. And then you've got Install System, IRC, and then you've got the Seduction Handbook here. So first thing I want to do is I just want to right-click on the screen here. You can create New, Paste, Show Desktop, Create Launcher, Desktop Preferences. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick. So you've got General... You can change icons, labels, backgrounds. You can select a solid background color. Wallpaper mode, zoom in the image. Different wallpapers. I don't think you're going to get a lot out of the box because it is a lightweight operating system. And then you've got slideshow. If you want to bring your own wallpaper folder over, you could just enable slideshow and then point this to where the wallpaper folder is. Then you've got advanced. You can add home, trash, computer, to your desktop if you want to or you could remove them if they're already there so let's close out of that and like i said you've got a single panel right here you come down to the bottom you've got power you got date and time right here and then sound clipboard eject usb device network keyboard layout scroll lock number lock caps lock so it will let you know if you turn caps lock or number lock on i like that because some operating systems, you don't know if you're actually on it and you have to look at your keyboard. And some operating systems just don't give you that option at all. So just a little plus in my book. Let's go ahead and right click on the panel. Right here, you can configure task manager, move task manager, or remove it. And then you can configure the panel, manage widgets, add widgets if you want to. Let's go ahead and configure the panel. And right here, you can see that you get a little bit of customization with your panel. You can make it bigger, smaller, I believe. Yep, make it going bigger and smaller. And then, of course, you can change your icon size if you'd like to. You can make those bigger or smaller. As you can see, the panel adjusts with that as well. And then you can have alignment of the center, the bottom of the desktop, background color, font color, background image. And then you've got widgets over here. You've got your desktop switcher, quick launch. These are just some that you have right here. And then, of course, you could add some in the future if you wanted to. Just scroll down through here. Pick what you might want to add, or you can do a search for one. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Come down to the bottom. You've got your settings. Let's go ahead and open up settings. And you're probably familiar with these settings layout. You've got appearance. Let's go ahead and click on appearance. And when it opens up, it gives you what kind of widget style you can have. 
And then down here, you have the QT palette. You can change the colors if you would like to. That's really up to you. That's a personal preference type thing there. Then you've got icon themes. Right now, it's running the papyrus icon theme. You can change it to the papyrus dark if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and do that. And as you can see, things kind of get a little different down there. So let's go ahead and change that. Then you've got your LXQT theme. Right now, we're on the Winter Sky theme. Now, you can change this to the KDE Plasma or the Frost. So let's go ahead and click that and apply. And as you can see, everything kind of changed down here. You get different looks on your open icons. Let's go back to Winter Sky. Let's apply that. And as you can see, everything changes back. So you've got a little bit of customization here, but at the same time, it's a really lightweight OS. So that's really up to you how you want to do it. Then you've got your fonts and then color right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. You've got brightness, date and time, desktop, desktop notifications, monitor settings, power management, session settings, users, and groups. You've got your ADSL configuration, alternative configuration, and then, of course, you've got Synaptic Package Manager. Now, if you're not familiar with Synaptic, I won't go in-depth with it because I have in previous videos. Okay, when it opens up, it looks something like this. You can just make that a little bigger. You've got different things here that you can do, but it all comes down to putting applications or removing applications from your operating system. It's got layouts for section, status, origin, custom filters, search results, and architecture. I'm going to go up here and do sections, and what you really want to do is you can come up here and do a search if you'd want to. Then just put the name of whatever application you're looking for in there, do the search, and then when it comes up, all you'd have to do is go up here and click on this. And what you would want to do is mark for installation. Once that's done, you come down here, click yes, and then click apply. And you can install whatever software you want to on the system. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And we'll close out of the settings. Show desktop, desktop one and two. So we'll go up here. Accessories, you've got uh, Midnight Commander, Editor, and you've got PC Man File Manager. Let's go ahead and open this up. Now, PC Man is pretty lightweight, kind of old school when you think about file managers. You've got your usual suspects over here, and then you've got your home folders right here. It's really lightweight, stays out of your way, and just lets you get things done. Now, you do have the option to put a different file manager on this system, but I think for what this system is and what it's utilized for, I think this is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now, I do want to look up, let's look up Terminal real quick. LXQT terminal because I want to see what kind of resources we are using. So let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP. And they do have HTOP. Let's go ahead and maximize that so everybody can see it. And let's make that a little bigger. As you can see right there, I've only got 1.93 gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. At present, it's using about 603 megs. So that's not bad at all. I've been taking a lot different look at things lately, especially with RAM usage. In operating systems um, I have people tell me all the time I'll be showing a video with a gnome desktop and it's using a gig and everybody's like it's so heavy it's so heavy little do we remember the days of Windows and being at three or four gigs just to be open on a desktop that's my opinion if you think something different go ahead and let me know in the comments below so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and close out a terminal and yes I want to close let's come back down to the bottom here and then you've got LibreOffice Writer, LXQT Configuration Center, we already looked at. So at the end of the day, Seduction OS. If you're somebody that loves Debian, wants a little different look, or just wants to try something else in the Debian family, it's definitely something I'd recommend to go download and throw on a USB and take for a test drive. And if you're somebody that's really interested in just the LXQT desktop environment, I would definitely download this, take it for a test drive, because I think it really utilizes the LXQT environment quite well. Hey everybody, I got a question for you today as Linux users. Have you ever went to a website of a distribution and it's just this completely beautiful website and you're like, man, this is an awesome website. I bet this distribution is great. And you download it and you load it up and run it in a live environment or you put it on a virtual machine and you're like, wow, the website was 100% better than the distribution. Well. The reason I say that is I'm going to zip on over to this website real quick, which is xlite.exton.net. I'll be sure to include that in the description below. 
and it is the X-Lite Linux distribution. Now this is a great lightweight distribution. If you've got newer hardware, this thing is gonna literally fly. And if you've got older hardware, it makes using that older hardware completely awesome. I know I use some weird words when I describe distributions, but I mean this wholeheartedly. I've run this in a virtual machine and this is the lightest Linux distribution I've ever run. And at the same time, it is probably the most functional lightweight Linux distribution I've ever run. Now, this is the newest release. And if we come down here, it basically says the new version of XLite is based on Debian SID, which is the unstable developmental branch of Debian. And it's build 20726, and it's a total rebuild of XLite. The ISO file size is about two gigabytes which means if you want to run this completely in RAM, you're going to need about three gigabytes of RAM to do that. Otherwise, you can run it off a live USB, no problem, or open it up in a virtual machine, no problem. Now, this is their website. It's nothing fancy, not a bunch of flashing things and saying, hey, use our distribution. It's a great distribution. It's just a very straightforward website that has a lot of good information about the distribution in it. And it's got archives over here. X-Lite's been around for quite a while. Uh, I want to say we're going on six or seven years. Don't quote me on that, but I know it has been around for a while. And you do have about download, USB install, uh, x Android systems, and how to multi-boot it. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm not going to waste a lot of time here on the website. Uh, but if you're interested, like I said, I'll put that link in the description below. That way you can zip on over and take a look at it or download it for yourself especially if you have older hardware and you want a beautiful operating system that is very functional at the same time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zip on over to the desktop. Now, if you download it, throw it on a USB or open it into a virtual machine, this is the desktop you're met with. Now, right off the bat, one of the things I noticed is it's really small. It's hard for me being as old as I am and having to wear glasses to be able to read what's on the screen, especially up here. Or when you go down here and you want to open anything up down here, it is kind of small. Now, this might work for you, but if you're somebody like me that definitely has issues with sight, you may want to go ahead and fix this. We're going to go to settings. You've got composite. Let's look at all screen. Let's go to look and we will go to scaling. Now, this is what it looks like. It comes at a scale of one out of the box. I don't want to bump it up too big. I think I will go to 1.2, which should be big enough. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And it's going to come back and say your display driver does not support OpenGL. That's because I'm in a virtual machine, so I'm not going to worry about that. But what you will notice is everything gets a little bit bigger and it's easier to see. You got more of a readable text. Now, like I said, some of you all might like the little text. With me, I've got to have it just a hair bigger so I can see it. Now. First thing I want to do is I want to come down here to a terminal and I want to show you this and I'm going to go ahead and run a top and let's go ahead and maximize that so it's easier and let's make that a little bigger for everybody. And as you can see right here, it shows memory. I have a whopping two gigabytes issued to this system right now at rest with just the terminal open. I'm hovering around 400 megabytes being used. That is really light. I have had some XFCEs that run 450, 460, and I've seen this one right here. Uh, a while ago when I was doing some tasks in it before I started the video, it was hovering around 330. So this is really light. If you want to use it on older hardware, that older hardware is just going to jump back to life. But it's just not going to be able to run this operating system. It's going to be able to do tasks that need to be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. It comes out of the box with this background. I think it only comes with four. Let's go down here and take a peek real quick. Settings, wallpaper, let's pick that. And you do have four wallpapers. You got the one right there. You got the sun plane. Let's go ahead and apply that, which is a pretty wallpaper. And then you've got another one that kind of gives you that cool over the ocean wallpaper. And then you've got the sun space wallpaper go ahead and make it a little darker so it's not as bright which is i like that now one another thing i do like is with the open windows if you've got a window that you're working on but you don't want to completely close it 
you do got the shade effect where you just double click on it it turns into a shade and you can move it over to the side of the screen and then continue doing whatever you want to do now if you come down here and you open something up like the file manager and this is pc man file manager i do believe let me go ahead and look at that yes it is pc man fm 1.3.2 let's go ahead and close out of that and let's zip back on over to their website real quick because i want to double check what kernel this is running on and let's come down here it is debian sid unstable developmental and it is running on the kernel 5.18.0-2 amd64 so that's pretty up to date i know we're on 6.1 now i do believe or 6.0 so it's got a newer kernel and let's go ahead and close out of that and like i said if you wanted to keep this file manager open too and out of the way, you could just slide it over there and keep doing what you wanted to do. And when you wanted to bring it back up, just double click on it. Now, this is a very lightweight file manager. You've got home folder, desktop applications. That's it. That's all you've got over here. Now, if you wanted to add like a video folder, that's real simple. You just come over here, create a folder. Let's call it videos. Click OK. And you've got your video folder right there. So like I said, it's a very lightweight file manager, but it stays out of your way and pretty much lets you get things done. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And if you look up here, you've got some of your main folders right here. If you click on that, it's gonna open up your Exton home folder, which is boot, EFI, ISO Linux, and live, which is what we have mounted right now. And then you do have your home listed right here. And then your root. And then your temporary files. So you have access really quickly with your folders right up here. Like I said, if that's something you like, you can keep it there. If you don't want that there, obviously you can go into settings and change that. Now, if you come down to the bottom, you do have one panel down here. You've got power. You've got what keyboard you're using, which is I'm using US. And then you've got your Bluetooth with different adapters and things that you can set up here. Then you've got your ethernet or wired connection because i am in a virtual machine it's converting my wireless on my laptop into a wired in the virtual machine then your sound time battery level and then over here you've got synaptic package manager which is the way you get your software let's go ahead and open that up and like i've said in previous videos synaptic is a type search install type application so saying that you've got sections status origin custom filters search results architecture and then back up to the top but this is where you would come over do your searches for software that you wanted to install once you do your search and it pops up over here what you would do is you would just click on it like here we would click on it mark for installation and it would show you if there were any other dependencies that were required for that but it says here the following packages have unresolvable dependencies and you'll run into this especially if you're running in a live environment a lot of the times what you're going to have to do is actually install the operating system, let Synaptic update everything, and then be able to go in and do your searches, and then you would be able to install software. So let's close out of that. And that is how you get software on Xlight Linux. So let's go ahead and close out of Synaptic, and then you come down here, you've got your refract a snapshot if you want to take a snapshot of your system, and it gives you a couple different options here. You can create a snapshot with UEFI enabled, re-squash and make ISO, no copy, remake EFI files and ISO, rerun XORISO only, set up snapshot or exit. So that's definitely a way you can make a quick snapshot of your system. Let's close out of that. Now, if you want to install Xlight Linux, it uses the Calimares installer. Welcome to Xlight Linux, GNU Linux 2022.07 Exton build installer and you've got your standard things over here welcome location keyboard partitions users summary install and finish it's a really nice installer I've enjoyed using it with the many arch distributions that I use calamares did go through a time about 18 months ago where it would have a bug here and there but it seems like they've worked most of those bugs out and it's a pretty solid installer so let's go ahead and close out of that yes and then you come down here you got firefox you've got your file manager which we already saw it comes with gimp out of the box let's see how long it takes gimp to load up and that's a pretty quick initial start anybody that's ever used gimp before 
knows that your first start in Linux usually takes a little bit because it's got to collect all your fonts and all the information it needs to run. So that opens up and moves rather quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of GIMP. Then you've got another terminal, you've got terminology, and then you've got your four different desktops right here. Now if we come over to the app menu, you've got your favorite applications, which is Advanced Network File Manager, which is your PC Man File Manager, Install, LX Terminal, Applications, you've got Accessories, Programming, Graphics, which has got your Screen Grab, Image Viewing, GIMP, Internet, FileZilla, Firefox, Sound and Video, Alsa Mixer GUI, eMixer, MPV Media Player, Pulse Audio Control, we already saw, SM Player, and then your System Tools. Enlightenment File Manager, which is different from PC Man. Let's all go ahead and open that up. And there's your Enlightenment File Manager if you wanted to use it. You've got Desktop Home, Root, Temp, and of course your Exton ISO that I am running the virtual machine from. So let's go back down here to Applications. System Tools, Gparted, LX Terminal, NM Tray, Refract Installer, Terminology, and then Navigate. You've got Home. This is your File Manager access from right here. You can get in there real quick from right here on your App menu. Run everything. Take a quick screenshot. We've got Desktop. You've got your four virtual desktops. Shelves. If you want to add a shelf, that's what these are called, shelves. You can add a shelf, delete a shelf, change gadgets, show and hide all windows. Enlightenment, About, About Theme, Restart, Exit, Settings. You've got Composite, Gadgets, Modules, Palette, Screen Setup, Shelves, Theme, Wallpaper. And then you've got All, which brings over to Look, Apps, Screen, Input, Windows, Menus, Language, Settings, Dialogs, Extensions, Files, Preferences, and then, of course, your system. But, guys, that's a quick look at X Lite Linux. It's very lightweight. It's easy to maneuver and get around in. I do believe if you've got some older hardware out there, I mean, dual core stuff that's, you know, 10, 12 years old, you put this on there, it's going to bring new life to something that you might have sitting in the corner that you're not using. And if you decide to put it on a newer piece of hardware, it's going to literally fly. The Enlightenment desktop, Debian SID, you really can't go wrong. We'll go full screen and we're going to be looking at the newest release of Amarok Linux. Now this is a Brazilian distribution. It's based on Debian and it comes in two different desktop environments. They kind of come down here and explain some of their differences. They say that Amarok Linux is for everyone. It has no ads, licenses or fees and respects user privacy and empowers users with full control over their hardware. They make it easy. It's ease of use. They've got two different desktop environments, which is Mate and LXQT. And then you've got Amarox Linux is a friendly system. They've got plenty of support. If you go up on their forums or go to their blog, they've got three different ways to install software on it, which I think is great. A lot of people will always yell and scream and say, there only needs to be one way. If Linux had just one package management system, it would be a lot easier. I do believe there might be a little bit of fragmentation, but most of the distros I use, when I use their package management system, whether it be Arch or Debian or, or OpenSUSE, I don't have any issues with. If a bunch of choices is what turns you off from Linux, you're probably in the wrong place to begin with. It is a rolling release. It does give you access to over 7,000 games with Steam. And then of course you can surf the web and it's free and easy to use. And its uh, project is hosted on Fost Host, which is a not-for-profit hosting provider. And then you do have OnlyOffice that I think gives them a little bit of a sponsorship. And then they kind of break down some news releases down here about new releases and things like that. And then when you come back up top, you got about blog download support. you got your forum. They're on Telegram. And then, of course, they do have a wiki. And then different photos, videos. And then, of course, if you like what you see with this operating system. You can always donate to help the developers out. Now, what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to zip on over to the desktop. And if you download Amarok Linux, throw it on a USB or open it up in virtual machine or boxes, this is the screen you're met with. I like the background. It's just plain, simple, a little bit of color. And we are taking a look at the LXQT version today. 
I wanted to take a look at the lighter version because Mate has been covered over and over and over again. I just like to bring attention to other things out there that give you options in the Linux community. It also has the XFWM window manager, which is the window manager that's utilized in XFCE. So you've got the LXQT desktop environment and then the XFWM window manager. Now, you do have one single panel down here on the bottom. It's real simple. You've got power, time, sound. You've got uh, clipboard, Bluetooth, internet, and then package update indicator. And then over on the left, you actually have their software center. I'm going to go ahead and open their software center up. Let it populate. And when it populates, this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and maximize that so it's easier for you to see. And it's real simple. Doesn't have a lot of flashy animations. It's just straight and to the point. Uh, right off the bat, you've got your editor's picks, which is Ventoy, OBS Studio. You've got boxes, font manager. And then down here, you've got different categories, development, education, games. Let's click on games. Just see what, and it brings up your games right there. And then you could go back over here. And then you've got a lot of different things down here. There's Rocket Chat. Let's click on that. And it lets you know some information, show you some screenshots, gives you reviews down here. And then, of course, you can install it from over here. So let's back up. Same thing with OBS Studio. You could go over here. You could click on install and it would go ahead and install it for you. Now I'm going to back up one more time. But like you can see right here, it's just quick and to the point. Now you do have a repo button up here. It'll show you the repos and you can search for them actually. If there's a specific repo or a Debian repo you're looking for, you can do a search for it here. Once you find it, if you want to add that to Amarok, you just click on it and you've added it. That's just a quick way to do simple things in Linux that a lot of people have to jump through hoops to do. Now, sometimes you've got to, you know, cut and paste different repos and put them in the terminal or do this and that and the other. With Amarok, they just make it easy right here. You can search for a specific repo. Once you find it, click on it and you can add it to the system. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and close out of the Amarok Software Center, but I do suggest you definitely take a look at it if you do download this and take it for a test drive. And then, of course, you've got Firefox right here. You've got Featherpad. If you open up Featherpad, it's just a text editor. It's lightweight. It lets you get things done pretty quick. We'll close out of that. And then you do have Terminal. Let's go ahead and open up the Terminal. Let's see if they have HTOP. And they don't. They have TOP. And right now, at rest with just the Terminal open, you're running about 700 megabytes. Now, that's not as light as some of the other distributions I've been looking at. But it's still relatively good, especially when you can compare it to some of your proprietary operating systems. So we won't even bring those names up. It's not worth the time. But I've only got two gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. It's running rather smoothly. I'm running it in GNOME boxes on a simple i5 with eight gigabytes of RAM. And it's very snappy and it's very quick. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then we can go over here to the file manager. Now this is PC Man File Manager. As you can see, it's got a simple dark with blue look to it. Uh, you got your usual suspects over here. You got home directory, desktop trash, computer applications network, and then of course your regular home folders right here. PC Man is a good file manager. It's not feature rich like something like Dolphin, but it still lets you get your job done. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And that's everything that's pinned to the panel. So let's go ahead and do a right click right here. You can open in terminal, create new, paste, select all, invert, and create launcher or desktop preferences. So let's go ahead and pick desktop preferences. Right here, you can adjust icon size, spacing, label text, background. If you want to change their background here, it's pretty simple. It's set to zoom the image to fill the entire screen. And then the wallpaper image files are listed right here. Now, if you want to change the wallpaper, all you have to do is click browse and it'll bring your wallpapers up right here. And then what you would do is just click on one and then click open and then apply. And then that way it would set it as your background wallpaper. Looks like a close up of a log burning or something like that. So let's go ahead and browse again. Let's see if we can find something a little bit more less flammable and let's apply that. And you get kind of a mountain range in the background with some pine trees down here. Uh, I'm going to leave that. I like that. You can also set it up for a slideshow if you want to. You could set up your own wallpapers, put them in a folder, and then click right here to enable it, and then browse to that folder, and it will use that folder as a slideshow. And then advanced. 
visible shortcuts if you don't want them on the desktop you can uncheck them all and apply and they all disappear other than install Amarok OS I do believe I will leave them off so I'm going to close out of that now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the app launcher and click on it and preferences I want to go check out some settings information LXQT settings configuration center let's open that up and let's move this down here and maximize it so it's easier for you to see and right off the bat I want to go ahead and look at about Amarok Linux let's go ahead and open that up and it is Amarok 22.09 rolling release it's using kernel version 5.15.68 Amarok 1 and LXQT as your desktop environment. Like I said, I'm running it on an Intel Core i5, and I've only got it given two gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you wanted to, you could come down here and export a system report if you wanted to, but we're not gonna do that at this time. I'm just gonna close out of this. And then you've got a lot of different settings up here for your LXQT. You've got appearance, brightness, date and time, desktop notifications, keyboard and mouse, monitor settings, alternative configurator, common UI setup, login window, and you do have Synaptic Package Manager as well. Let's go ahead and open that up. And when it opens up, we'll go ahead and close out of this. And I'll go ahead and maximize this so you can see it. And this is more of a type search install program. I've covered it before in different distributions I've looked at. You would come up here and click search. And if you wanted to search a specific application, something like Caden Live, you could do that. Hit enter to do the search. And it would bring Caden Live up up here. So all you would want to do is click on that, mark it for installation. And then down here, it will tell you all the other dependencies that would need to be installed to use it. You mark those as well, and you're good to go. All you would have to do is click apply, and it would install that application. Now, what you can do is you've got that one selected. You could go over here. You could do a search for something like OBS Studio. Go ahead and look it up. It'll bring it up here. Go ahead and click on it to apply, mark it. It would tell you the dependencies, mark those as well. And now you've got OBS and Caden Live selected. As you come up here, it'll show that those are selected. It'll show that OBS is selected. Pick all of your applications out. Do a search, pick them out. Once you have them all selected, just click on apply. It will install them all at once. It makes things pretty easy, makes things pretty simple, and it's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of Synaptic, and I'm gonna quit, and Window Manager, Workspaces, Firewall Configuration, KDE System Settings. If you wanted to open that up, you could double click on that. And it gives you some appearance choices you can make here on your workspace. And then Search. And then, of course, your Settings. You can set Proxy, Connection Preferences, Cookies, Window Shares, and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and out of that. Now we come back down to the App Menu. You go up to Accessories, you've got Archive Manager, Feather Notes, PC Man, Games, Graphics, you get GIMP out of the box, you don't have to download it, Image Magic, Internet, you got Firefox, Telegram, Desktop, Thunderbird, Qubit Torrent for your torrents, Only Office is the Office Editor of Choice, and then you've got Other Packages. Here's another way to install software on your system. What you can do right here is, let's make that big, you can come down here and do searches from here as well. So let's say you wanted to look up something like Shotcut. I don't know if it would be available. Video editor, Shotcut's right there. You could pick Shotcut, click on it right there, and then you could apply the changes and it would install from right there. So you've got three different ways to install software on this operating system. I think more choice makes things easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. Let's come back down to the app menu. You've got sound and video, hypnotics, VLC, media player, pulse audio volume control, then your system tools, package updater, Q terminal, system profiler. You do have time shifts, so that way you can make snapshots of your operating systems. So that way, should you run into something major, you can go back and refresh from a previous snapshot and not miss a beat. And then preferences, LXQT settings we already looked at, firewall configurator, software center, Welcome Screen, Window Manager, XFCE Terminal, About LXQT, and then Leave and Lock Screen. So that was really just a quick look at the LXQT version of Amarok Linux. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite Linux distros that's out there. I get a lot of flack in my comments sometimes, well not a lot, a little bit, from people that go, here you go again saying a great Linux distribution. Are all of them great? 
Do you never have negative things to say about any of the Linux distributions? And I really do. I've said some negative things about Linux distributions. But in general, there are quite a few out there that I do like. And this is one of them, Maybox Linux. Now, one of the reasons I like Maybox is because it is based on Manjaro. But for some reason, it doesn't have all the issues that Manjaro has. I don't know if it's because it's not being used in a KDE or a GNOME environment, or that the developers have actually taken the time to fix the bugs and take a lot of the issues out and then put OpenBox on top of it so we can just have fun with the distribution and get work done. This is the August ISO refresh. Now we are at their website, mayboxlinux.org. I'll be sure to put that in the description below. And if you come up here, it just says Maybox Linux is fast, lightweight. It's a functional desktop. It's rolling release. It's Manjaro based with open box window manager. But like I did say, it doesn't seem to have all the bugs that Manjaro has. And if you come over here, you've got a few screenshots. Come down here, it lets you know it's lightweight and fast, fresh software, stable. You can donate to support them. And they've added something this time Let's meet Colorizer. We're going to go over that here real quick because I really like it and I think you will too. And then you've got quick tiling, side panels and menus. And then you scroll down and it's just got some news and things like that. Then if you go up top, you've got home, news, user guide, about, forum, and donate. But Maybox Linux, they have a really good website and the distribution itself is pretty impressive. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go ahead and close out of Fire Dragon. Let's go ahead and close. So we're going to come right over here to GNOME Boxes. Let's open it up because that's where I have Maybox running. And let's go full screen. Now, if you download it, throw it on a USB or open it in a virtual environment, this is the screen you're met with. Right over here, you've got a conky. Let you know date, time, things like that. And then down here, let you know how much memory and disk usage you have going right now. At present, I've got 1.93 gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual machine. We're using about 397 at rest. So you can keep track of everything over there. And then it lets you know you're using 22.08 or both. Uptime has been 6 minutes, 52 seconds. Kernel version is 5.15.60. you got the LTS kernel that you're using right there. And I do believe you can also download a 5.4 version. Don't let me fib to you. Let's go back over here. Let me open up my downloads because I think I downloaded both of them actually. 5.15 and then 5.4. You can see it right there in the description. It says Linux 5.4, Linux 5.15. So you can actually get two LTS versions of it. So if you download 5.15 and it doesn't work out for you, you can also try 5.4. I like that. They give you the older long-term kernels to choose from. Now, if you come down to the bottom, Maybox has what I call a nice little cheat sheet down here. Got a lot of keyboard commands. And some of them might be what you're used to and some of them might not. But I like the fact that they do put them down here so you have quick access to them. Everything from terminal all the way down to go to desktop. Super key plus that. And then you've got windows where you can alt F4 to close. And then, you know, iconify. Whatever you want to do down here, you've got a little cheat sheet that you can use. And then menus and side panels what you can do inside the menus and side panels now what it means by menus and side panels let's go up here first up top you're going to have a split area or you've got a panel up here that's got transparency you've got some applications over here and then you've got a little area over here that's got your internet camera date and time and of course power now if you see this little arrow right here you just click on it and it pops this up, okay? You've got a lot of different things right here. Right off the bat, you've got settings. You've got Maybox Control Center. So let's go ahead and open it up and check that out. And when you open this up, it gives you a lot of different options and changes and things that you can do with the system. Just like system and hardware settings. You've got locale settings, language packages, kernel, user accounts, time and date, mouse and keyboard, hardware config. Then you've got A Rander, LX Rander, and then Neo Fetch and BTOP. Now, it doesn't have B H top. it's got B-Top, and if you click on B-Top, let's open that up. Kind of gives you a breakdown here of all of your CPU threads. And then over here, it'll break down your RAM, total RAM, used RAM, available, cache aid, and free. 
but I still I still like H top, but I like the way this breaks things down. So I may play around with it and, and use it on a daily basis and just see compared to H top if I like it or not. I do like the fact that these don't jump around as much and I can get a better view of what's being used inside the terminal without all these changing position every 2.3 seconds, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got software, install popular applications. If you click on that, you'll have a window pop up that gives you the option to install whatever browsers you might want, or email, or ebook editors, or whatever. You can come down through here and just basically pick all the applications that you want to install. You can come over here, click Blender, click GIMP, click Inkscape, Krita, and then in one fell swoop, you can update the system and install all of these applications. That is definitely something I like that's in Maybox Linux. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got preferred applications. You've got add and remove software. And you've got software update. Now if you click on add and remove software, it's Paymac. If you're familiar with Manjaro or just using some Arch distributions that come with Paymac in general, you can pretty much add whatever you need to here. So let's go over here. First thing you want to do is go to preferences, go to third party, and go ahead and enable AUR support, which is your Arch user repository. Or if you're somebody that uses something like Fedora, it would be equivalent to RPM Fusion. And then we want to check updates, go to general. And we can go ahead and close out of that. And then you can go over here and do searches and install your software. And then you've got software update. You've got auto start. You can select items to put into auto start or remove them. Look and feel. This is something that uh, there's been a little bit of talk about what they've done in this release of Maybox Linux. They have something called Colorizer, which I think is pretty impressive. I'm going to go ahead and open it up right now and kind of show you how it works. Let's go ahead and double click that. If you look over here, you kind of got a dark theme to your Conky. You got a dark theme to your Colorizer window. So I'm going to close it real quick and I'm going to show you what we're doing here. If you notice these themes for the Conky, and for the colorizer window. Let's go ahead and close that. Now, I want to change the wallpaper, but I'm not going to use it from right here. I want to pull it up over here because I want to be able to get access to it really quick and close it really quick. So, if you look in the bottom left corner, I can scroll through different wallpapers down here. Okay? You can pick a wallpaper. I'm going to go with something like that. Let's go ahead and pick that. Then I'm going to escape. Now, when I open up the colorizer, you'll see that the, the windows have changed their theme to match the wallpaper that's in the background. Now, I know people are going to say this isn't a big deal, but you can actually go up here and kind of change and play with this a little bit. Like if you go to regenerate, if you want to reverse and have light themes on your conky and then a dark theme on this, you can just go up here. Click reverse, and it gives you a light theme on that, a darker theme on this, or you can go back to the way it was configured, and then that changes, and then you can come over here and come down, menus and panels, do you want no light background, do you want with dark background, you can kind of go with dark, and then we can come back over here, and then we can go menu panels, and you can change that up if you want to. So it's really just a fun way that if you really want to customize your Maybox install, you can have quite a bit of fun doing that. So if you do give Maybox a try and you go download it, please zip on over and check Colorizer out. I'm going to tell you right now, last night I played around with this a little bit and I got lost changing colors and customizing for about an hour and a half. So I think you'll definitely enjoy it. So let's go ahead and pull this back up so we can see what's going on. Then you've got tint to panel, you got conky, you got menu panels, compositor, themes, and help. Now, a lot of people I know, they're kind of scared to leap off into open box because they think it takes a lot of time to get set up. Honestly, I like the way open box is set up out of the box. I might want to tweak some colors here and there, but other than that, it's just easy for me to use. So we're going to come down here. You've got system and hardware. If you look right here, that's a lot of the settings we just had in our previous Maybox Control Center. Oh, it closed on me. Then you've got Look and Feel, System Update, PayMac, Renew Keyrings, Maybox User Guide, Maybox Forum, Keyboard Shortcuts, 
screenshot tool pretty easy you just lift that up pick what you want to take a screenshot of full screen active or select your area so if you select your area just select it boom it takes your screenshot you're good to go come down here you got configure log out suspend hibernate lock shut down configure options and then if you just right click on the desktop you've got install Maybox, terminal and remove software ww browser which is just firefox Maybox config and then you've got all your accessories clip it file manager and you do have a lot of applications out of the box but not what i would call bloat in development you've got genie graphics color picker flame shot gpic image magic multimedia you got audacious mpv video player internet like i said you got firefox advanced network config settings we've already looked at the settings system add remove software btop maybox linux control center key binding screenshot lock screen exit and then you come back over here and what you have pinned up top here is your main menu and then your show desktop then your file manager let's go ahead and open that up it's a nice simple file manager stays out of your way so you can get work done let's go ahead and move this over here and let's see what version this is PC man file manager and this is version 1.3.2 you got your usual suspects over here you got your home folders right here so let's go ahead and close out of that terminal emulator let's see if they do have htop and they don't so let's go btop we've already looked at btop now I do know this if we close that you should have top so if you don't like using BTOP, you can always use TOP. So there's your option there. Now right here, if we want to compare some numbers, we're using 461 megabytes of the two gigs I have issued, and that matches exactly with what we got going on with our Conkey over here. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then, of course, install Maybox. And let's click on the other arrow. You've got your main directory. This is your access to your file manager right here on your desktop. you got your home directory. you got downloads, docs, music, pictures, videos. Then you got your CMD palette, menu side panel. You can adjust these any way you want. Look at all these settings. Man, you could really get in get in here and have fun and really customize this desktop environment to work the way you want it to. Then you've got your wallpapers. You can do random wallpapers. You can generate wallpapers. You can also come down here and you can have a wallpaper directory and you can change this to go to your directory if you've got a folder that you already have a bunch of wallpapers in. And then Colorize, we've already looked at FS Search, Psy Radio, LX Task, BTOP, and then Weather. Click on it, you get a little nice terminal area here. Kind of shows you what your daily forecast is going to be. And then it lets you know what tomorrow's going to be and what Monday's going to be. So, And then, of course, if you do want to install it, it is the Calamares installer. I've had a lot of luck with Calamares. I do hear people every now and then that do have issues with it, but I never have. And that... It's pretty much a quick look at Maybox Linux, and that is Watt OS. Now, this is a distro that actually used to be based on Ubuntu, but now they have completely flipped over, and it's com completely based on Debian. And they just come out the other day. A new Watt OS has been released for immediate download. It's simple, minimal, and fast. It brings your old computers back to life with Watt OS Desktop Linux. And then it says down here, tools you need without bloat. You get to decide what you want without the clutter and overhead. Now, it is a lot lighter, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and read the release notes. It's based on Debian 11 Bullseye, the stable release, LXDE Desktop 11, the kernel 5.10. It comes with flat pack support out of the box. It's got the Debian backports added to apt, so you can add newer packages and firmware if that's what you want to do. Contrib and non-free added to app to ease installation of other items if needed. Calamares is what they're using as the installer. It's got the inclusion of GDEB ease install of .deb packages. You guys know what those are if you download them online. And we'll go through it a little bit on the desktop. And then they've got their Discord information and their social links. And then you can download the ISO. And then download will be available on November 17th. So I've downloaded it. What I'm going to do is fire it up in GNOME boxes real quick. So let's zip on over to the desktop. And as it's loading, we will definitely have to go over to the display and get the resolution correct. But like I said earlier, I actually worked around in Watt OS in probably 2018. I liked it, but it wasn't one of those operating systems that just, you know, used Ubuntu and stepped forward, kind of like a Linux Mint. 
but I've played around with it a little bit on this Debian base, and it's really a nice OS. If you're putting it on older hardware, or maybe you want to put it on newer hardware and just make that hardware fly, this is definitely an option. Now, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and fix our display. So let's come down here, go to Preferences, and go to Monitor Settings. And what we will want to do right here is go 1920 by 1080. And let's apply that. Click OK and we shall close and let's go ahead and make that full screen there we go so out of the box you get a nice lightweight lxde desktop environment if you just right click on the panel you can create a new folder select all invert selections sort files uh, desktop preferences if you click on desktop preferences it lets you change the appearance stretch and crop to fill the monitor area and then I think you're probably just going to have one or two wallpapers. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring that one up. Let's open that one. I think I actually like the other one a little better. But you can come in and set your wallpaper up to whatever you want. Or link it to a file that's got all of your wallpapers in it. And then, of course, you can adjust your desktop icons if you want documents on the desktop. Or you can take those off and take the trash can off. And then advanced. Show menus. Use desktop as a folder things like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and install Watt OS. This should be the Calamari's installer. And it's pretty simple. Those of you who've seen me cover different distributions in the past, it's got a welcome screen. You go ahead and click Next. You can set your location. Click Next. Set your keyboard. Adjust your partitions. You can just go ahead and do that. And then of course come in here and put your username in. and then your password and then it'll give you a summary right here and then when you click on install it'll ask you are you sure but we're going to cancel that so that's pretty easy so that's the calamari's installer and that's how easy it is to install watt os now if you come down to the bottom here you got a little arrow let's click on it and this brings up your shutdown reboot suspend switch user lock screen log out or cancel let's go ahead and cancel out and then you've got time right here, wired connection for internet, and then of course you've got your sound and audio right here. It comes out of the box on mute, so make sure you double check that. If you install it and you're like, I don't have audio, it's automatically muted out of the box. Then you've got two desktops over here, and then there's the terminal. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal and see what we're running. Now, if you can't see that, let me maximize it a little bit for you. Out of the box with terminal open, we're using about 397 megabytes of the two gigabytes I have issued to it. Now, that is light. That is really light. And that's one of the things I like about LXDE is that it's pretty functional, but at the same time, it runs really light. Uh, I still have a lot of people out there that say they like XFCE over it because it's a little bit more customizable. And I have to agree with that. But if you're not really into tune with that fully customizable or changing anything, just wanting something that's lightweight and you can use it, this is definitely a, an operating system to take a look at. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you come back down, you've got Firefox. And then let's go ahead and open up your file manager. And this right here looks to be PC Man. Let's go ahead and double check it. And it is PC Man FM 1.3.2. It's lightweight. Uh, you got your usual suspects over here, home folders over here. And it pretty much stays out of your way and lets you do what needs to be done. Now, it is a little less feature-rich than, let's say, like a dolphin. But if you're not somebody that does a lot or gets really in-depth of what you're doing inside your file manager, PC Man will work great for you. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now, let's come down here to the App Launcher. Up here, you've got Accessories. It comes with Screenshot, Vim, X-Archiver, Graphics, Document Viewer, Gthumb, Internet, Firefox, and Transmission for your torrents. Office just comes with Document Viewer. Pulse Audio Controls, VLC Media Player, System Tools, there's your GDB Package Manager. If you're not familiar with it, basically what it is, is if you go online and you find a Debian package that you can download, once you download it, you go into Downloads, right-click on it, say Open It With, open it with GDB, and it will install it for you. Gparted, HTOP, LX Terminal, Task Manager, and then Preferences. You've got Advanced Network Configuration, Customized Look and Feel, Light DMGTK, Monitor Settings, Power Saver, Synaptic Package Manager. And this right here is a 
great package manager, a great way to install applications on your system. If you don't want to use GW by itself, pretty much it's a type search install type package manager. You just come up here and you could type in something like Caden Live and go do a search on it. It would bring Caden Live up right here. You could just click on it to install. Market for installation, these right here would be all your dependencies. Go ahead and mark all of those. And right there, it'd be ready to install. All you would have to do is click apply or come over, search for a lot more applications that you want to install. Just mark them all at the same time and then install them all at the same time. So Synaptic is a great tool. I love it. It's probably one of my favorite package managers. Let's go ahead and quit. And then back down to the bottom, I think you have log out and run and that's it. Guys, that's just a quick look at Watt OS. Great, lightweight distribution, nuts and bolts, just gets to what you need to get done. Easy way to install applications based on the solid, stable Debian. You really can't go wrong with it. Is Watt OS something you might download, throw on a USB and put in a virtual machine, take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99, and on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.